Yo, what is up guys? This is Jason Henry, the Redhead Henry, as always, and today we are going to be finishing up the two-part section of how to set up your stage inside of After Effects. So this is part two. If you guys missed part one, the link is down below in the description of this video. I also have a playlist for this as well. Today we are going to be going over how to finish up your 3D environment, 3D rotation, and some other features as well. So let's get into it. Do it. Okay guys, so it's worth noting that in the last video we pre-composed all of these layers into one composition and for the purposes of showing you guys today in this tutorial I simply undid that so that I have all my layers back in my main composition here and that's just for showing you guys uh, what we're going to be doing today. So the very first thing I want to cover is motion tile. Now if you guys read the comments in my last video, um, I did want to save motion tile for this part too and this will definitely help you guys out uh, while you are working inside of After Effects. So you'll notice here on my stage when I go on my camera controls that as I'm panning this camera uh, you'll notice that I have the edge of this back background layer with the mountains is now exposed. Now there's a couple ways you could get around this if you wanted to. You could simply inside of MS Paint or Photoshop, you could extend this out, but I'm going to show you guys how to use motion tile. So if you go over to effects and presets and just type in tile and click on motion tile and apply that to this background image, uh, you can come over here to the output width and now you can extend out this background. So this is a good way of duplicating or replicating or mirroring those sprites or images and have them extend out. If I wanted to do height as well, I could also do height, but since this is just a background that's going uh, left and right, we don't need to worry about height. So I'm gonna turn this uh, back to zero, or sorry, back to 100. Put that on default there. So this is a very useful for when you are creating a parallax type of background. Now you gotta be careful with this when you're using motion tile. And the reason I say that is because unless you have a very beastly computer, if you start applying motion tile to all of these layers and everything that you start setting up inside of your stage, it's going to start to become uh, very cumbersome on your computer. But again, that just depends on the type of graphics card and how much RAM you have and whatnot. So that's just something to keep in mind. So now that we've got that motion tile applied to that background uh, with the mountains, now as you'll notice as we keep scrolling, uh, we can go you know as far back as we want and we can also apply it to our grass layer here as well so if I scroll down here to our grass layer let's put the motion tile on that and then we can expand out the height and width on that as well so you can see it just filled in the gap right there so that is a good way of tiling all of that out inside of After Effects so the next thing that I wanted to go over here with you guys is how you can easily create a simple six-sided or five-sided object and have it completely rotated inside of After Effects as you're moving the camera around it and whatnot. So I have a crate sprite here and we're going to build a simple crate on our stage right now. So I'm going to check this, make it 3D, and in fact you'll notice as I check that 3D it popped that image all the way back over here to where we had originally created our 3D camera so I'll just pan all the way back here and that's where it defaults it to so we're gonna make a crate we'll bring this forward inside a Z space and I'm gonna show you guys the simplest way on how to do this now it requires a third-party plugin and if you guys aren't familiar with downloading and installing plugins for After Effects I would highly recommend looking into it the plugin that you're going to be needing is called move anchor point and I have a link to this plugin down below in the description of this video but essentially once you get it installed you should have a little panel uh, up here in the upper right corner of After Effects I believe you can go over to window and you can choose where you want this panel to appear but the panel is called Move Anchor Point. And what this plugin uh, does is it allows you to move the anchor point on any, on any object 
inside of After Effects without having to use the pan behind or anchor point tool. So usually what you would have to do is you'd have to come to the anchor point tool, grab the anchor point on the image, and then you'd have to move it around. And based on where that anchor point is, that determines where it's scaling and where it's rotating and whatnot. So I'm going to undo that, hit Control Z, put it right back in the center. And what the Move Anchor Point tool does is that it quickly and easily moves the anchor point to any of the sides that you would like on the image. So if I come up here and click on the right side of the Move Anchor Point, it moves the anchor point to the right side. If I wanted lower right, it would move it to the lower right. If I wanted it center, it moves it to the center. So it's a very quick and easy way of moving the anchor point exactly to the edge of the image so with this crate we want to create a completely uh, 3d crate here so now I'm going to take this first let's color it let's do uh, like a scion it's fine and I'm gonna duplicate it and then I'm going to move the anchor point on that duplication to the right I'm gonna hit R on that new layer that's gonna bring up rotation and I'm gonna rotate the Y rotation now notice how it's moving that back I'm just gonna hit this to 90 and we're going to do the exact same thing again. We're going to go back to that bottom layer, duplicate it, move that anchor point all the way to the left, hit R rotation, and hit the Y rotation we want, negative 90. See what's uh, going on here with this, guys? Next, I'm going to duplicate this again, bottom layer. We're going to take that one. And this time, we're going to move the anchor point all the way to the top rotate and this time we're going to manipulate the X rotation I'm just gonna pop this up to 90 so now before we finish here I'm going to rotate around in this environment so you guys can see what we have so far so I'm gonna hit R rotation on our cam control and we're gonna hit Y and you'll see that we've got this nice looking crate here but obviously we need to finish the back part now if you wanted to you can use this same method and do the bottom part if it's an object that's sitting on the ground you don't need to add that layer there, but if it's something that's floating up in the sky or something like that, then yeah, you'd have to add like a bottom portion. But this is just an example. So we'll move the camera in this position just so you guys can see. Go back and this time we're gonna duplicate from this side one right here. So I'm gonna duplicate that, Control D. Move that anchor point all the way to the left. Oops, sorry, because it's inverted. Rotate. And this time you're gonna rotate 180 negative 180 and now we have our nice object sitting here in After Effects it's got all of its sides so that's just something nice to know if you're creating something that's fully uh, in a 3d environment here now to continue finishing up with our stage with a fully uh, 3d environment with our stage we're going to apply that same concept that we just did with this crate and we're going to do it with the background and everything here. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's orient our camera back to how it was before. So we're going to put this back to zero. And you'll notice as I'm moving in and out here, we start to get the black background where we can see obviously the edge of our, our stage and everything where we don't have our elements set up. So there's a couple tricks and ways that you can get around faking how to do this and obviously this is a big open environment that's outside if you were inside like with walls and whatnot that have hard edges that's much easier to do but because we're outside and a sky doesn't have like a hard edge there's a couple things you can do you could take the sky if you wanted to not make it 3d uh, but then you would have to control it manually whenever you would move the camera around but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sky we're going to duplicate it and we're gonna go to the rotation and we'll move the anchor point all the way to the side and the exact same thing here is we're gonna rotate it just like so and just for the purposes of this tutorial we'll do negative 90 whoops my bad 90 there we go so now it's all the way on that edge and now as you start to rotate your camera you've got that edge so you would do the same thing here with all of your other elements you could add it up to the top if you wanted to instead of adding a layer to the top you could just create a new layer new solid and I'm just gonna pick whip this color 
make comp size say okay and then it's going to drop this layer this background colored layer move that all the way to the bottom and obviously you could mess with the motion tile for this as well if you really wanted to so you could do a motion tile on the sky click that motion tile and you can do mirror edges if you wanted output width output height so that continues the clouds up and you can do it for this one too but again got to be careful with that motion tile Again, I would recommend doing it only if you have a beastly computer for all of these different layers and whatnot. So once you're fully done doing this, you should be able to completely rotate around inside of your environment and you should be able to animate inside your environment with all of your characters in 3D space. Now this was obviously all for creating a 3D environment. Now let's say you wanted to create an animation that still gave off that parallax effect with the 3D environment, but you didn't want to work inside of Z space with your camera for your animating your characters. You wanted to keep your characters on that 2D plane, which is kind of an old school way of animating as I see a lot of animators working inside of 3D space, or at least giving off the illusion that their uh, characters are fighting in 3D space. So I'm going to show you guys very, very quickly how you can still set this up, have 2D planes, but have them inside of 3D space. Okay, so all I have done here, you guys, is just created a brand new composition. Same settings as the previous video that we had done. Uh, it's just a standard 1080p with 30 frames per second. So the first thing we're going to do, same as last time, go to File, New, and then you're going to create a new camera. I'm going to call this Main Cam. Say OK. This should all be very familiar at this point. You guys should know how to do this. Next, we're going to create a new null object. And if you wanted to, you could go into your solids and pull out the same null object that you used from our previous comp. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna change these colors. We'll make them sandstone, why not? And uh, then we're just going to parent the camera to the null object. We'll call this null object cam controls. So now we have our camera set up. Let's start plopping in all of our background effects. So same thing as last time. You guys should know how to do all this color key. And again, I left that color key in there for you guys to show you how to do it. Uh, you should not have to do any color keying at all uh, the, with your sprites if you just make them transparent inside of Photoshop or whatever other image editing program that you have. So make this layer 3D and uh, let's scale this up. And then next we're going to do, let's go back to this grass layer here. And we'll make the grass layer 3D, scale it up. And we'll do this different sky. I had a different sky here. Yeah, we like this one. It's a nice looking sky. We'll make that one 3D, scale it up. Actually, we'll scale this down. Okay, so we have these three. This is gonna be a very, very quick and dirty, basic way of doing this. So if we look and come over to our two views horizontal, everything right now is at zero inside of Z space. So if we hit position here, it's at zero, grass is at zero. Let's leave our grass at zero. I always tend to try and do this. Uh, leave everything at zero the where you want your characters to be and then push everything else back inside of Z space And then you can also have things pushed forward in the foreground so that you have objects in the foreground as well But where all of your animation all your fighting and characters and are taking place is always on zero when you're working in the standard side-to-side -side, uh, Type of animation here. So I'm going to push back that background And I'm gonna push back the sky even further past that background and then we're going to take this grass, move it down. And these are not the right sprites for this. And we'll go to motion tile. But you guys will get the general idea. And uh, let's go ahead and do the output width. We'll move this down some more. We'll scale this up some. And let's bring the sky, scale that up. Now if you wanted to, you could add blurs to kind of give it some depth. So I'll just go type in blur, take that legacy blur on the sky, and let's bump this up to 30. Something like that. If you really wanted to add some depth to it, that might be too much. We'll go three, maybe do it for this background here as well. Just something there. And then we're going to bring in our character sprite, which I believe I had Bardock. We'll plop him down. And 
and uh, scale him up 500. Make sure he's pixelated. Make sure that grass is also pixelated. So now that we have Bardock here out on our stage, you can see that his position, his coordinates for Z are at zero. Same with the grass. The grass is also at zero. So he is on the exact same point as that grass layer. So if I wanted to move the camera, you'll see here it goes up and down. It's giving off that illusion of the parallax. And then as you're going left and right, it also gives off that illusion as well. And obviously, as you keep scrolling left and right here, once you get to the edge, you can just simply go up to your motion tile effect for the grass layer. And if you wanted to continue it out, you can just continue to. Okay, you guys, so that is going to be it for this tutorial. But hopefully these concepts get the point across for how you can finish finalizing and setting up your environments inside of After Effects. If you found this tutorial helpful, please go ahead, give it a like, subscribe if you're new here, turn on notifications, and comment down below if you found these tips useful, and let me know if there's anything you would like to touch on in the future. For the next tutorial, we are going to be covering the actual animation part of this. I'm going to be setting up a brand new composition and everything, so we will be getting into that in the next tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. Take care.